today we're going to show you how to deal with banks. And you know, in many, many gardens, we often found and are faced with this huge problem. And it doesn't really have to be the problem that it makes out to be. Especially in townhouses where they might have done some cut and fill, you're ending up with this glorious red soil, just like there is to my right. Now, number one, plants really battle to grow in it. Number two, it's as hard as rocks. So we're going to show you some quick and easy ways to get around it and also how to make use of the bank. Oh, Here Tanya, are. here's the sleeper. Where are we going to put them? Oh, no, easy tag. I don't get so excited. We've just got to <laughs> do a bit of prep work here. I mean, uh, this bank is hideous. I mean, look at the soil, first of all. Yeah. Have you ever seen such poor, poor soil? Yeah. Um, it, I mean, folks, it really, it's crumbly, um, it's full of clay. So we've got a big, big job to fix the soil and don't be tempted to just plant um, or just get things in. You know, I know it might be the quickest and easiest route around, but sure, your plants are gonna be so unhappy and they really aren't gonna do what they should be doing. So it's all about that prep work. Another thing is, Tanya, the, the second batch of sleepers we made, I added some more uh, uh, oxide in because mm. I wasn't happy with the, the colour of the first one. Yeah, the first one was pretty light, but yes. I'm loving this now. Very, very nice. This is really cool. Yeah. Now, folks, in prep for this bank, what we have done in the meantime is we've done this. Have a look here. We've used some CCA-treated poles and we've literally just taken a bit of weed guard. We've put a few on top of each other, put a thinner dropper down, and that just helps to hold the bank up. Now, in all honesty, um, this bank is just pure clay. Take a look at that over there. So there actually is no chance of the bank even falling or slipping down, um, literally even if we do have lots and lots of rain. But what the poles are doing are simply just Im improving the aesthetics of it. Just gives a better finish, makes it look nicer, and it really is one of your most cheapest options that you can look at. Yeah. So first of all, Garth, let's get your uh, sleeper step out the way okay. and let's get rid of this um, poor excuse for a pathway and let's start clearing the area. Right, cool beans. All right, I don't think we're going to do any digging right now. What we're going to do is first start with our putting in our first step. We're going to get the sleeper pathway in because that's most important and that's going to set the whole tone for this bank. Remember, that is going to, that is the main reason why we're actually doing this bank. We're not doing it just to make it look pretty. We're making it for a real access point so that we can get from this end of the garden up to that end. So let's get digging and get this first guy in. Now, when you are dealing with steps, any kind of steps, whether you're building a staircase, whether you are putting in sleepers or sleeper steps like we're going to be doing, you start from the bottom. Once you've got your bottom point, you can then work up and create your distance. I think we might need a pick. I think so. You can try first soil. with your spade, but I doubt it. Thanks, Garth. Okay, let's see what, let's see. Uh oh. Oh my word. It's like concrete. Go for it. All right, Goth, I think we're good with this guy. Yes. Nice and even. Let's get a bit of river sand on there, just to form a nice base so that we can get it nice and level. There we go. And that just helps when you're needing to reposition it. If you haven't got your base absolutely level, it's really good just to use a bit of river sand because it's easier to work with. You can adjust your level slightly if you need to add a bit more. Um, and it isn't that much hard work, so right. He's looking good. Goth, let's pop him in. First big boy. You want to grab that side, don't yeah, you? Let's go. Right. In you go, baby. Looking gorgeous. Beautiful. Nice. Let's check this out here. Oh, Bob's your uncle. Fantastic. Nice and level. Yep. Just off the second step, we've just moved it in, so there's ease of when you step onto it. It's nice and solid, in place. And let's go for the next one. Oh, 
Okay, guys, this is the last big boy. Yes, that's the last Let's one. Just for you. level this out a bit here. All right. Let's go. Excellent stuff. Let's move them over a bit. Nice. Pop that across there. Beautiful. And then all we're going to do is just shave a bit of this, which is just going to lead itself into the bank. Basically, the top of our bank, which is what we wanted to achieve right in the beginning. You'll notice, folks, that as we came up, we made sure that within the steps that we had an even spacing between the rise, once we got to our level that was desired, we then literally just used them as stepping stones. So once you get to the top, well then an ease and gentle step, and we've got to right to the top. Now what we've got to do is fix this awful soil by adding in loads of compost and planting it up with some good bank retaining plants. So, steps are done. We've prepared the bank by putting in loads and loads of good compost. We've also mixed in some bone meal into this, so everything is ready and good to go. So what plants are we gonna be using? Well, this is certainly one of my favorite little guys. This chap is called Agapanthus blue zebra. Now, yes, it is an Agapanthus, I kid you not. It's got this wonderful stripe. And remember, Agapanthus, just as a general rule, are very, very good for holding banks. Um, they've got an intense bulbous root system, which really means that once they get settled in and we do have torrential rains, well, the soil is definitely not going to move. This little guy also gets a beautiful blue flower, spike about that tall, about 40 centimetres, with a large blue head, and that, in a swathe on this bank, is going to look really, really good. So, I'm going to get to planting this guy. I'm sure Garth will come along at any minute now to give me a hand. news Garth. Lovely worm. There's a worm. That's always good news for when we're gardening. <laughs> that means that there is life. There's life in the sand. <laughs> no. As a general rule, when you're planting on banks, it's much better to plant the plants with the flow of the contour, if that makes any sense. So, in other words, don't plant the plant upright, just like that, so that you've almost created a step into the bank. It's much better to dig your hole, all right, and then plant the plant at an angle with the slope of the bank. So, what does that do? Well, number one, it enables your plants to really kind of mold into the landscape so that they don't look like they've just been plonked there. It also then stops you with getting that terraced effect that you naturally will get if you're planting plants 90 degrees into the bank. So that's generally the best way to do it. And you can see already, we're getting this lovely flow and these beautiful curves that are just gonna follow on with the bank here. One of the other plants that I've chosen to go on the bank is this little guy here. This is called Asparagus Mazeppa. Um, one of the, of the great ground covers that you can use to plant on a bank. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly why. Take a look at its root system. It's got these awesome bulbous roots, and that means that as they grow and spread, so the bulbs are just gonna take over this area and really hold the soil well. These little guys can grow in the sun or in the shade, pretty tough, not fussy at all, and those are the guys that you want to make sure that you're going to plant on banks and tough areas. Another great plant for holding banks is this little guy here. It's called Dietes grandiflora. And Dietes is an indigenous plant, so tough it can grow in the sun or in the shade. And the really good news is it's a really good weather folk forecaster. 
And you must be thinking, well, what on earth are you going on about? I guarantee you, when this guy starts flowering or is just about to open its flowers, we are in for rain. And that is one sure way of knowing if the rains are coming. So when this guy starts opening up and you've got an outside briar plant, you just move it inside. Really good guy to have in your garden, tough as nails. And of course, it's got a great root system, which is gonna hold the top of this bank just beautifully. In between the steps that we've got here, there are a couple of options that you can use. The one that I've chosen and this is this little guy, and it's called a rashier. Now, rashia is typical the way you can identify it by its little triangular leaves. Can you see each little leaf is in the form of a triangle? Now, this guy is so tough that I kid you not, a car could drive over it a good couple of times and it will still grow. Um, I've seen it used in driveways where cars do literally go over it. Um, I've seen it in rockeries and in amongst steps like this and it really is amazing. Of course, the beautiful part of it is when it flowers. It gets a tiny little pink and white striped flower flat, flat, flat onto the plant because it grows very prostrate. It doesn't get tall at all, which means it's a great option for putting in between steps. So yes, this is going to be really bad soil, but you know what? This is one plant that you know will cope with it. Wow, Garth, it looks pretty hot. It came out very nice, didn't you? Gee, whiskers are before and after of momentous proportions. Completely different, yes. Well, there you go, folks. It's as simple as that, from taking something that was really, really awful and needed some work, um, has taken us a couple of hours. Literally, that's it. And we've managed to transform it into something beautiful that will retain this bank in time, to spread out and literally be a mat of beautiful foliage flowering dietes, of course the agapanthus, and then the little asparagus in the front that's just going to creep over the edge. So I'm pretty chuffed. <laughs>